Let your man go, huh? Drop it, I don't want to talk about it. Drop it, hell? I want to hear about this, homie. I said forget about it, cuz. Got Quintez in. Pounding on that trash can. I think the Astros must be in town. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go rip me. What's wrong with your I'm sorry. What's wrong with your padres? I'm sorry. What's wrong with your padres? What the last console you got says about you. If the last console you got was the new Nintendo 3DS XL, then you probably love playing video games on the go and you love handheld games. The new Nintendo 3DS XL is probably one of the best handheld consoles, respectfully. You eat, sleep, and breathe video games. Whenever you're on the road, you game. Whenever you're sleeping, you game. Whenever you're taking a walk, you game. Whenever you're at a funeral, you game. Whenever you die, you game. If the last console you got was a PS5, then you've either probably had a PlayStation all your life and you've grown up playing PlayStation and you've upgraded to the PS5, or you've never had a console at all and you're starting off with the PS5. You probably got it to play Spider-Man, God of War, and other exclusives. But you probably don't really play on it like that. You probably just play it here and there. You're not really addicted to it. Third, the last console you got was a Switch. Then you probably just got it on some casual shit. Not really too competitive, but you got to play with your friends, play the new Mario game, play Smash, play Mario Kart, on some shit like that. And lastly, if your last console was the Atari 2600, then you're either an old head that wants to go back to their old roots and play older games because you miss it, or you're a Gen Zer that wants to explore older games and see what the games were like back then, so you copped one. What the way you sign a yearbook says about you. If you use hags, then you're just a fake ass motherfucker. You're two-faced because you know damn well you don't want that person to have a great summer. You'd be signing talking about some, have a great summer, knowing damn well that if they died over the summer, you wouldn't care at all type shit. But to cut you some slack, you only use hags whenever you're signing a yearbook of a person that you don't really talk to like that. More of an acquaintance rather than a friend. But if your crush signs your yearbook and says hags, then yeah, you're cooked, my nigga. She do not fuck with you. You're cooked. If you only sign your initials and nothing else, then you're dry as hell. You're drier than the Sahara Desert. Like niggas could talk to you for hours and you'll only give one word responses. Or niggas could text you whole essays and you'll only reply with K or okay. If you draw on your book signatures, then you're creative as hell and the world is your canvas. It's your world and we're living in it. Your drawings are better than Picasso, Leonardo, 
doodle bob like tell me how whenever i see a yearbook drawn that shit be so good for no reason like damn if you're the type of person to write paragraphs on your book signatures then you'd be doing the most sometimes like you'd be yapping just to yap unless you're a teacher if you do this then it's really not that deep relax you don't need to write a whole essay like motherfuckers will cry their heart out on a yearbook signature only for that person to literally be their next door neighbor what the grade you got your first phone says about you Part two. If you got your first phone in seventh grade, then I feel like this is the perfect time to get your first phone. You feel what I'm saying? It's your second year of middle school. One year after that, you're about to go into high school. So it's a pretty good time to get your first phone. And I feel like it's the most average time. A lot of people get their first phone in this grade. You probably started off on some kind of Android, but then eventually you got an iPhone. If you got your first phone your freshman year of college, then that means throughout your entire childhood, you didn't have a phone and you probably just bought a phone yourself or your parents finally got you one since you're away and you need to contact them. You were probably also one of those people that had to trap off the iPad. So you probably had to get Snapchat on the iPad, Instagram off the iPad, Facebook off the iPad, just trapping off that bitch. If you got your first phone in 11th grade, then it's probably around a time where you first started working. So you probably just worked, bought your own phone and started paying your own phone bill type shit. And lastly, if you got your first phone in 10th grade, then you were one of those motherfuckers that had a sneaky come up. Like back then, niggas would sleep on you and roast you up for not having a phone. But in one day you popped up with the latest iPhone and niggas were surprised. What the time you go to bed says about you. If you go to bed at four o'clock AM, then you most likely are one of those motherfuckers that probably go to sleep late and wake up late. You probably wake your ass up at 3 PM and you're probably just really bored during the day and you got nothing to do. You just play video games and you just do nothing. You're the unemployed friend that got a mad motion though. If you go to bed at 2 AM, then you probably just be up late at night, just in your head and you just cannot sleep at any other time but 2 AM. Like you physically cannot go to sleep at 10 PM. You can't go to sleep at 12. You can't go to sleep at one. Your body only falls asleep at 2 AM for some reason. Like you could literally get tranquilized or put under sleeping gas. But if it isn't after 2 AM, then it won't work on you. You still won't go to sleep. If you go to bed at eight o'clock, then this is definitely your bedtime because there's no way that you're physically perfect purposely putting yourself in bed at eight o'clock. There's no way. You're definitely forced to sleep at this time and you hate it. And lastly, if you go to bed at 10 o'clock, then you're an organized ass motherfucker. You probably plan your entire day and you're just a clean individual that got their shit together and their life straight. You're not focused on no bullshit. You're just focused on yourself and you're locked in. You'd be standing on business for real. What your favorite childhood channel says about you. If your favorite channel was Cartoon Network, then you got the best taste when it comes to everything for real. You are a cartoon freak and you know damn well that Cartoon Network does not miss at all. Like there's no misses. Every show is a banger type shit. You probably used to watch Regular Show, Adventure Time, Billy and Mandy, Courage of Cowardly Dog, fucking Foster's Home. They had everything on that bitch. If Nickelodeon was your favorite channel, then you're also valid. Nickelodeon was also tough, and I feel like it's second to Cartoon Network type shit. You probably also like live action shows more than cartoons. Like you liked iCarly, Victorious, Sam and Cat, all that. You definitely also fucked with Fairly Odd Parents and Danny Phantom too. If you liked Adult Swim, then you like that more mature content. You used to wait for Cartoon Network to be over at like 8 p.m. and you used to go straight into Adult Swim and watch that adult shit. You probably fucked with King of the Hill, um, Family Guy, American Dad, all that. And lastly, if your favorite channel was Boomerang, then you like to watch the more older cartoons and you probably are much older. You're a boomer, it's even in the name. You like Scooby-Doo, probably Johnny Bravo, Samurai Jack. What the first phone you had says about you. If your first phone was a flip phone, although it's kind of patched now, but back then you were low-key way ahead of your time because that shit was low-key hard though. Cause whenever you try to rizz up a girl, you would just take out your phone, flip that bitch and tell her to put her number in. That shit hard. And then whenever you were done with it, you would just close it and then put it right back in your pocket. That shit needs to come back for real. If your first phone were one of these sliding keyboard phones, then you were also ahead of your time too, because these shits were like a little mini handheld gaming device. You would just flick it down and start typing shit. Tough also. You probably had this for a little bit just as a starter, and then you finally upgraded to something way better. If your first phone was the iPhone 5C, then you were definitely the coolest motherfucker in school. Like everybody wanted to be your friend and everybody was asking you, yo, you got games on your phone? All motherfuckers just tried to touch your phone and want to play on your phone. You also had iOS 7 and that was really the thing back in the day. And lastly, if your first phone were one of these CVS track phones, then you came up type shit. You started from the bottom and now you're here and you were humble the whole time along the entire journey. You were probably also one of those kids that used to be like, I have a phone, but I just left it at home. Ah, phone. What your favorite cereal says about you? Part two. 
If your favorite cereal is Fruity Pebbles, then your opinion is correct and you got the best taste when it comes to everything. Fruity Pebbles and Cinnamon Toast Crunch is the best cereal. You're also the type of person to eat cereal at night too. Not just in the morning, but also at night. You eat cereal whenever because it's always busting, no matter what time. If your favorite cereal is Frosted Flakes, then you're really chill, but you can be annoying sometimes. Like Frosted Flakes is a little overrated, but it gets the job done type shit. You're also probably a greedy motherfucker too. Like you're the type of person to go for five bowls of cereal a day. Anytime you open a fresh box of cereal, that shit is gone within a week. Anytime you open a fresh box of Oreos, gone within an hour. If your favorite cereal is Captain Crunch, then you give off leader of the friend group type energy. You give off alpha male or alpha woman type energy, and you're most likely always right, and you got knowledge type shit. You got that knowledge. And lastly, if your favorite type of cereal is tricks, then you're always playing tricks, and you're always playing games. You're a type of motherfucker to not take anything seriously at all, and you're one goofy out motherfucker. If you're in a try not to laugh situation with this motherfucker, then you're screwed. What the grade you got your first phone in says about you. If you got your very first phone senior year of high school, then you most likely grew up with pretty strict parents that didn't allow you to be out late, didn't allow you to play video games on weekends, didn't allow you to breathe at the wrong time. But real shit though, you used to have strict parents and you most likely got made fun of by other people for not having a phone. You used to hit motherfuckers with the, I have a phone, but I just left it at home type shit. And you also used to be like, yo, you got games on your phone? If you got your first phone in second grade, then you just grew up mad spoiled. And you probably just cannot keep your eyes off your phone for one second. You just grew up on the phone and glued to your phone. And you just got your phone way too young. You probably also had the latest phone too at the time. You probably had like the latest iPhone. You probably had like the iPhone 15 or some shit like that. You or him or her. Everybody wanted to fuck with you and be your friend. If you got your first phone in sixth grade, then you most likely started with a flip phone or a slide phone or some kind of Android, and you just started working your way up as the years progressed. And lastly, if you got your very first phone in kindergarten, then you're on some Stewie Griffin shit. Like, you're smart as hell. You probably tuck your parents in bed. What's your favorite pizza topping says about you? Part two. If your favorite pizza topping is sausage, then hey, yo, like what? Nah, it's like, no, nah, but you're valid though because sausage is good, you know what I'm saying? You can never go wrong with some sausage pizza, but it's a little bit behind pepperoni. Pepperoni's better, but sausage is also decent. If you like jalapeno on pizza, then you love spicy shit, bro. You live, breathe, and eat spicy. You're not gonna eat anything if it's not spicy. Shit, you'll even drink spicy water. Everything has to be spicy. You're probably also the type of nigga to put a hot sauce on pizza and ketchup on pizza. Your breath also be hot as fuck most of the time. If you like barbecue chicken pizza, then you are the messiest eater out there, bro. You are mad messy. And you're the type of person to get dirty ass hands and then touch a video game controller with it. Like you'll eat a bunch of shit and then put your hand all over the controller and rub the shit on it. But don't get it twisted though. You got a good taste because this shit be busting. You're not a picky eater at all. And lastly, if you like onions on pizza, then you try to eat healthy, but most of the time you're eating junk food. But while you're eating junk food, you try to make it healthy. So you put onions on the pizza. So it kind of contradicts, but you're making it work type shit. Thank you.